Yeah, they're getting a little bit of karma for their deception. So they feel like you're closing off or resisting them, and that's their karma. Um, we have red flags. I'm also seeing, too, they're reaping uh, a poor decision or decisions to be decept deceptive. And they're reaping their karma they, for not listening to their intuition. Okay? So they feel like you retreating from them. Is their, they, they feel like the universe is keeping you away, and they feel like that there's, that's their karma. Hi, Magnificent Souls. Okay, so this is for Pisces. You guys get to go first this month because I didn't get your reading out in time. So, um, you get to go first, okay? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, and North Node. That's an omen. It's 4.59 in the morning. And we have someone speeding down the road. All right, Pisces, this is a general reading. It may not apply to everyone. Okay, I will take the parts that do apply. This um, is cross-watcher friendly. Sometimes the energies come in reverse. I'll do my best to try to pinpoint what's happening in your situation. I still have some bonuses for the last couple of signs to put out. Okay. Keep an open mind when watching these readings. Remember um, to take what is meant for you. I try to focus on the lessons. I try to focus on um, what the purpose is. The patterns that one needs to change in order for you to have the best experience, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to start off with my um, psychic tarot for the heart. I'm going to pull out three main cards. Past, present, future. Now I will say this. I'm very impressed by the energy so far. Wow. So we have sacral chakra, which is a two, which is your second chakra. We have the solar plexus, which is a three, your third chakra, and your future potential. We have the impress, nurture, very beautiful energy. Um, so we have two, three, three. We have the eight of swords in reverse as your overall energy. I love it. You're going to be coming out of a space of feeling um, stuck. Um you're acknowledging self-sabotaging behaviors and you're acknowledging that these self-sabotaging behaviors have been hindering your process. There is a lot of growth in the future because of this acknowledgement. The inner source is a very mental energy. So it is your thoughts. It's your, you know, okay, what this self-sabotaging behaviors are or these thoughts are. And because it's in reverse, this is an acknowledgement of, I know, what I need to change about myself in order for me to have success and growth. Wow. Right underneath it, we have two eights. Very karmic um, pattern of repeating a particular lesson or there's something that you have been experiencing for a while and you're ready to move forward with the eight of wands. You want to be, you want growth, like I stated, as your outcome energy with the impress. So I'm I, I'm impressed. Very good. Very good, Pisces. You guys should be very proud of yourselves. And then we have the Two of Wands in reverse. You're choosing a path. Um, five of Swords, Severance. Coming out of this space of confliction, of of being around people that may be um, causing conflict in your life. Or these could uh, be your thoughts. This could just purely be your conflicted thoughts. And here you are mastering yourself with the Magician. Um... And then we have opening up, letting go. Finally letting go of whatever this was that was restricting you or keeping you stuck. And then we have moving on in reverse. Beautiful. Um, again, a realization that there is something that you need to release. A lot of baggage, of course. A lot of past baggage. And this could be from this past current life or from multiple previous lifetimes. 
um, of experiences. So let's get started with the past energy. Let's kind of just break this past down a little bit. I'm going to use a combination of oracle messages and tarot cards to get a well-rounded picture of what you've been going through um, up until this point, okay? So what's your sacred chakra um, is recommending, right? Because your body speaks to you, okay? Every time you feel a sensation in your body, this is the way your body communicates pain, um, any sort of um, sensory um, reactions, sensitivities. This is the way your body communicates. Your sacral chakra wants to communicate that there needs to be balance and wholeness here in the way you express, right? Because your second chakra is the seat of your emotions. It's also um, near your sexual organ. So this is a very um, sexual uh, center where it is going to um, dictate how you relate to people on an intimate level. And I'm not only talking about a physical level, physical intimacy, but also intellectually and emotionally. So this would signify um, why the pattern, how it started. There could have been this um, wound or imprint that created a, a issue with vulnerability, being open, being able to trust people. Um, being afraid of let, letting people get in close. So this means that you may have been hurt and this could have been by a parent. It could have been by a past experience in childhood or a particular relationship. And it created an imprint that made it very difficult for you to trust and be vulnerable. So the fact that it's upright is positive because this means that you're working on this energy center. So there is an acknowledgement here that your body has been communicating and you have been receiving the message and the communication and you have been really working on this part of you maybe unbeknownst to you you may not even been you may have not even realized that you've been working on your sacral now what you can find with the sacral chakra is that um there could be an overactive um overactiveness of this chakra which means that you could be too um expressive to sexual or um too vulnerable where there's no boundaries so we'll talk about that a little bit um so for your sacral chakra i just wanted to point out that um its keywords are are i want and again it does um correlate to the reproductive glands such as the testicles and ovaries so sometimes when this is blocked there will be issues in those areas um it can cause all type of issues down to infertility, to cyst, to any um, reproductive issues. Okay, that is one manifest manifestation in the physical when there's a issue. This is how your body would communicate. There's an issue, so there will be some sort of health related problem there. But um, known as the sacral chakra, the second chakra is located two fingers below your navel and relates to the emotions, the desires, creativity, and sexuality. Okay, so there could be an issue with, like I said, be, being intimate or there could be an issue with becoming intimate too quickly. So let's talk about that. So this is the past. This could be recent past. This could just be the past in general. I'm just keeping the spread simple because I don't want to make these super long. This small. Clarify the sacral chakra, please, for Pisces. Ooh, so we do need balance here. Absolutely. Wow. Um, yeah. So you've been experiencing a lot of sexual activity here. Okay. A lot of sexual activity, a lot of repressed anger in the sacral chakra. Why? Because you may have um, been exploited sexually. You, like I said, there could have been a lack of boundaries. And there could have been um, situations, um, connections where you were connecting to karmic soulmates or learning a karmic lesson of patterns of no boundaries. So you may have experienced some injustices when it came to intimacy, being vulnerable, people taking advantage of you, 
in all ways, in any capacity, but specifically there was a particular situation you, where you may have been taken advantage of sexually. For some of you guys, this started in childhood, and I don't want to trigger you. This might be triggering for some of you guys. You may have experienced some sexual abuse, okay? Um, but it could have stemmed from a childhood um, traumatizing event, and that may have created an imbalance and as you grew older, you had a lack of boundaries here. Or um, if there has been some sort of um, traumatizing situation, um, it created this imbalance and made you feel that the only way you could gain attention, love, is through being overly intimate, overly you know, promiscuous or lack of boundaries. So there could be an exploitation here of your um, vulnerability. I, I feel like you there there was a period of you finding yourself, um, and I, I'm being drawn to talk about this because again, sexuality is being really presented with this lover card. There's some experiences, or there is a person that you've connected to, and there has been a constant betrayal here, or there has been disappointment. Um. In relationships where you felt strong connections to people but they always um, seem to kind of um, kind of just been left up in the air or been more physical surface level and I see you wanting to renew okay I see you wanting to renew um, or to heal this this particular chakra but this is also saying that there is a spark here that is being presented to you where you are able to address these issues so that you are able to attract a vibrational match, but not based on your past toxic patterns, but based on a new um, awareness of this, of your, of your sexuality, of your self-expression there could have been and this applies to men or women okay men does do this too there's an instant gratification um and it is usually through um sexuality a lot of times people use this um sexuality as a form of escapism um as form of validation um for a woman you know i feel that somebody took advantage of you someone there was a very strong attraction to a karmic partner, uh, someone that you've had many past lives with. And um, part of the lesson was to learn boundaries. There's some sort of an imbalance here. Um, and there was a very strong, like I said, tie to someone. Uh, but it was very sexual based. And you're trying to move this energy into something more... Um, intimate but more on a emotional level right so there could be this desire to reconnect with someone um that really feels like an energetic match for you but it could be toxic so we do need to be very careful here because there's a pattern being presented here so i just want to tap into that past energy because it kind of feels like it's going to repeat itself and I feel like the goal, wow, look what flew out or flipped. Wow. <laughs> Feminine. We have your, there's still some repressed emotions that are needing to be addressed here. Because there is a lesson coming back around, it appears. And I feel like the overall energy is about releasing yourself from this pattern of repeating the same pattern with people or with a specific person. Okay. And if you're a masculine watching, um, you're constantly having these um, surface level relationships or there's a relationship with someone that it's it's very hard for you to detach from them because of the intense push and pull attraction. Um, this this feels very, um, this, this push and pull fear, feels very um, love hate-ish. It's almost like you love this person, but at the same time, there's a lot of war. It's like love and war. There's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of back and forth. Um, but there's a. it's very difficult for you to pull away from this person. So you could be dealing with a Libra 
Some of you guys are dealing with a Capricorn and some of you guys, there's an Aries involved, okay? So let's see. I need to clarify these three. Karma, toxicity, and attraction. This is devil energy, you guys. The toxicity card paired with attraction. Yeah, trust issues are being um, highlighted, but also the universe is, yeah, is saying to you that there's a plan or be mindful though even though this says a need to trust in a divine plan regardless of the external we still have this energy of deception right under it it says someone is not being honest or withholding information i'm definitely seeing that that is an um an identifier of why there is this imprint trust issues that is a main um block in the sacral being uh, the inability to trust so you could be dealing with a masculine or a feminine that has trust issues. Um, they keep relationships very surface level because they're afraid of letting anybody get close, okay? So let's look at this. Um, so some of you guys may be um, feeling a very intense connection. Some of you guys, it's a, it feels like a twin flame. But for me, I always you know, look at this as in matching someone's energy. Um, okay, someone feels very strong um, feelings and feeling like you're their twin flame. Um, and if you are connecting to someone as their twin, we have the gift card. There's a wish here, a desire to reconnect with this person. Okay. Can we clarify solar plexus, please? I want, yeah, here, fear. And that's exactly what this solar plexus is representing. Third chakra. The third chakra is about um, courage. It's the, you know, the ego centers. You know, it represents the willpower, the, um, the center where you call upon your inner strength, it's the inner sun, your courage, your ability to um, really um, push yourself. So it's the key words for that chakra is I can. It's located above the navel area and just below the rib cage. It represents power, vitality, willpower, self-esteem, and confidence. Yeah. So there is an insecurity, okay, because again, like I said, there is somebody coming back around, um, even though there's an intense desire, there is also fear associated with this um, particular person, because again, there could have been a pattern of this person hurting you over and over again, um, so there could be this um, fear. Can you show me what's happening here with the solar plexus and this limitation? Again, there's the sacral chakra, sacral sh sexuality. You're afraid that this person is only going to use you. This connection has a potential for a sacred tantric alchemy. Again, the sacral chakra is a space for um, connecting to someone on a very deep, intimate level, physically, but in a spiritual way, in a sacred way. Um, but someone may have used like I said, you, um, and harness a lot of your inner, uh, your own divine energy. You know, I feel like there has been this taking and taking of, of your energy, but never reciprocating it. So there is a parasitic type of relationship. And again, what's coming up is that there is a need to detach, but there looks like there is this person here that wants to come in and reconnect with you. Um, it's a fire sign for some of you guys, Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius, okay? Or, and or Sagittarius. Um, again, but it is, there is deception tied to this, okay? Part of this, um, the purpose of this person coming back is because there is some sort of um, transformation that needs to be triggered. It's, it is faded. And the purpose is for someone's higher self to be activated. So it could be both one or both of you. 
um, in order for this person to um, heal. Okay, so this person is your mirror. Absolutely, you're mirroring each other, which is what the twin flame energy is. It's a mirroring. One person mirrors back the repressed um, feelings or things that are repressed within you. Can you tell me about this fire sign? Yeah, see, this fire sign wants to come back and they want another chance to make things right. This fire sign feels that you are a vibrational match to them. Can we clarify twin flames? Or this is how you feel about them. We have stomach and we have unexpected people, events, <laughs> travel. I'm sorry, unexpected people, events, messages, travel, or situation. There could be another relationship that this person may be in with a twin or with, again, someone that they see as an energetic match. That that relationship may have become stale and their pattern of behavior is seeking out a supply a source of um energy <laughs> i don't want to say it like that but it just feels like this person um there is something there is some sort of gratification or something that they get from you it's a renewal it's a renewal of energy it's a spark they're in a stalemate situation they it, and they want a little bit of a, a spark. They want a little bit of a, some of your healing energy. You are the nurturer. You know, you have this nurturing energy about you. Can we talk about um, some of you guys? You guys are the fire sign. You don't have to be dealing with a fire sign. But this could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Again, I do have Libra. Um, I do have... Capricorn and Aries being rep represented here. Aquarius as well. Um, Libra and Taurus with the, em the Empress card. And Scorpio with the Pluto card. So this person says, I want another chance, okay? But you're not feeling very confident. What's the message here with the solar plexus? You're being asked to have courage and confidence here. Why? To take a chance with this person or this is what you're thinking. You're like... You're wanting to take a chance. You're wanting to, um, or you're thinking about it at least. I feel like you may be not wanting to take a chance again because this confidence here is issues here saying, I don't think I want to do this again with this person because the last time um, this person betrayed me. Limitations. My fears are last time this person took advantage of my sexuality. They betrayed me. Um, underneath the take a chance card where it says you can't grow in your comfort zone. This is about taking a chance confidence to maybe not repeat this cycle. Maybe not to keep taking this person back because it appears that you keep falling for this pattern, this temptation. This person comes in, and they um, somehow get you to trust them again. You connect with them and then unexpectedly the situation becomes stale. So they come in. And it's a spark, it's it's very passionate, the flame is lit, and then they stop taking decisive action towards you, and it becomes stale, and unexpectedly there's a tower, or they ghost you. So it says here, lessons of reuranus is being taught here, and this is what this is representing, this is what you're being advised to do to detach. It says radical attraction, this is what I'm really picking up, sexual pull radical attraction is sexual pull it and then it says comes with inconsistency they come in they want the spark it feels very magnetic it feels very twin flameish the, the flames are lit very intense attraction this is a pattern okay and um but the problem is it comes with inconsistency and detachment. So this means that when they come in, they come in very intense and then they detach very quickly from you. They, they, they get ghosts, <laughs> you know, and then it says a theme of freedom or commitment. So this person is very um, sometime-ish, wishy-washy. They don't know if they want to be in a commitment. They don't know if they want to be free. So it says no expectations are the best expectations to have, okay? 
when you chose symbiotic again this is a mirroring effect this is a beneficial balance i mean this is what you want you want it to be mutual i think you mutually are dis displaying the same toxic patterns where you both are displaying this energy of push and pull both of you are very attracted to each other but both of you have the same wound that you're mirroring back so you both have trust issues so you both sabotage so it's like you meet this person it gets very it, it, it goes straight into a very sexual physical level relationship too fast right you, you, even if this is someone new you're meeting this is still a pattern it's like i meet this person it's very intense i really really like them I have a physical connection and then like literally it fizzles out just as, fast, as soon as it started. So these relationships never really last. It, it, it just, it, and it's a constant cycle of this meeting new people, having an intense attraction to them, even if it doesn't get physical and then it fizzles out. Even if you don't have sex, it's like, it's a, this very intense energy and then your hopes, you get your hopes up and then boom, disappointment. Boom, something happens. Boom, you, you find out that they're deceiving you or this is your assumption. Or they assume that you're deceiving them and then someone is gone, out of there. Right? They cut you off. I'm going to cut you off because I don't, I don't trust this. You're being inconsistent. I don't, you're moving funny. You know what I mean? So for some of you guys, it could be, oh, you're moving funny, but for... Um, another group of you guys, this is the same person that you're having this pattern with and this person comes back or they're attend they're wanting to come back. So this is a, a pre-warning that the, someone's going to come back and this person may, um, initiate a communication, communication with you. And it's not that this person doesn't like you. This person really it does have strong emotions for you or feeling, I I don't have any emotion cards, but let's be fair. Let's get some tarot out just to confirm the emotions. Because I don't want to say that this is, I just want sex. And it could be, though. It could be that they just, because this is all that this ever amounted to. It never went past. Because one or both of you never let it. The, because the trust issues are so deep, it can never get past surface level. Because you're mirroring the same fears. So just as much as you don't trust this person, they don't trust you. So when you, so let me give you an example. Let's just say this person communicates something to you, right? And they say, hey, um, let's go out later, right? And you say, yeah, sure. And then something happens and let's just say you, this person changed, they, they say something else, right? Let's just say they, they cancel the plans. Or they say um, that they had to, they have to reschedule or they have to come later than the time that you anticipated, right? So you start to get a little bit uneasy because you find that to be a little bit inconsistent because they didn't properly communicate. Maybe they didn't tell you until the last minute, right? Just I'm just giving you like a just general example. So then you become a little bit, um, you know, your your trust issues start to kick in. You know, your your spidey senses, oh, I don't like the way this feels. It feels very inconsistent, especially if this is a pattern that this person displayed before. Maybe this is something you've experienced with a past relationship. And then you become very, um, you become very detached. Like, oh, I'm going to pull back. I don't like the way this person's moving. I don't really want to talk to this person anymore because this person's being a little inconsistent. And that makes me uncomfortable sacral chakra solar plexus it makes me feel uncomfortable right so now you're detaching now this person is looking at it as oh she's detaching she may not be as interested in me right so he becomes a little bit okay let me pull back too okay especially if this person has not developed a strong sense of confidence if a masculine doesn't have a strong sense of confidence and there's a block in their solar plexus, they're going to operate from ego. So what they're going to most likely do is mirror back the same behavior and they will become detached. Then it turns into games. It turns into, okay, uh, you know, she's acting funny. You know, especially if you, if they text you, you don't respond right away. They're going to take that as a sign. Oh, 
you know, this, this is rejection. This looks like rejection to me. So then they're going to kind of pull back and then you're going to look at it as, well, this person was never serious because you're pulling back. You're not even attempting to make it right with me. It becomes a series of mind games. It's, well, and I'm not going to text them because if they really want to be with me, they're, they're supposed to be chasing after me. And this person's going to be in the energy of, because they're in their pride and ego, I'm not going to chase after her. So then it's going to turn into this mirroring of both of you guys feeling rejected. Both of you guys are feeling that the other is being deceptive and it creates a standstill. It creates friction and conflict. Um, aside from that, there is somebody that you're having this connection with, a sexual connection with. You want it to go to a higher level, but you can't trust this person. And you're being asked to listen to your intuition. What's the message here with this deceptive person coming in with this Ace of Wands? Maybe a very physical, pay attention to the red flags. Yes, they're going to come and say, hey, Pisces, I want another chance. But the universe is saying, pay attention to the red flags. Tune into the subtle um, energy that you are receiving about this situation. Okay, listen to the messages from your body. As I stated, your body communicates with you. So again, back to that example of this inconsistency, your body may communicate to you, Pisces, something's not right. You might feel anxiety. Anxiety is a sign of mm, your body saying, mm, I don't like the way this feels. It makes me feel uncomfortable. It makes me feel unsafe. Solar plexus, sacral chakra. It makes me feel unsafe. Red flags. Your body is trying to communicate about a person to you. Okay. Awaken your heart and let love in. Be mindful of boundaries here. Yes, um, this person has awakened your heart. And this is also an indication that this person has hurt you. Your heart chakra. They have awakened your heart center by causing you some sort of pain. Can we clarify heart chakra with some tarot? Eight of Wands. It's always left up in the air with this person. Like I said, as soon as they come in, they come in very hot. Hot, it comes in very intense, but then it fizzles out. And a lot of times it feels like for some of you guys that are not too physical with this person, um, it just feels like the communication fizzles. Okay. So I don't want to make it just, you know, about sex. Like you're, you know, like you guys don't have common sense. It's not that it, it is that some of you guys did not have healthy boundaries. Okay. Some of you guys had to learn a couple of times with this person before you gain that sense of self-worth. Nine of Pentacles. It took you a little bit of going around a merry-go-round for you to say, wait a minute, this person just comes in and they only offer me sex and then they, you know, initiate an argument with me or there becomes some sort of conflict between us and then boom, they're gone. Or boom, I run away and I'm gone. It could be you running away. It could be you detaching. Um, eight of Wands, yeah. So the passion fizzles. Something's left up in the air. Clarify the Eight of Wands. Yeah, to a source block. Okay, someone's at a standstill. Yeah, some of you guys are dealing with a married man, a man that's already in a relationship or an earth sign, a, a, an authority figure. This could be someone that you have children with as well. This could be your baby daddy. <laughs> um, but this is an earth sign. This is a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. Or this is a person that is having a hard time making a decision. I'm also seeing too, for some of you guys, this tux, ooh, okay, I didn't mean to drop this card. I don't know if you saw it fall, but this fell out of my hand. Um, I wanted to say, as I was starting to say, that this could also represent this person's in a toxic relationship. Um, okay, they're in a soul tie with someone, but they're having a hard time with releasing it. And I wanted to say that, yeah, there is a third party that this person's unable to let go of. Or there is someone that's having a hard time letting go of this person. All right. Again, I feel that in order for this to, to work, um, there is a lesson of self-worth here. Someone needs to become single. Um, there could be an argument. Okay. There could be an argument um, with this person. I see you arguing. Can we clarify? Yeah. You're saying to this person that you don't want to be attached to them anymore. We have the Queen of Swords. I see you wanting to sever. Um, I'm also seeing too, there's a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of anger. I see you telling this person that you need to leave an air sign. Okay, or this person's communicating with you that they've left an air sign. 
but it's still coming in as a little bit of temptation. Some of you guys are dealing with a Leo, okay? This could also be your energy if you are an air sign. You could be a Libra, an Aquarius, or Gemini dealing with a Pisces male. And I see you being very closed off to this person. I see you being very guarded and not wanting to let this person penetrate you um, because this person has a tendency to disappoint you. Okay, especially if this is someone that has put you in a third party situation. I see you being really, um, you're restraining from accepting this person's offer. This is, this person's trying to tempt you. Um, some of you guys are going to learn this lesson. Uh, some of you guys are going to realize that this is a pattern of toxicity, that this person lures you in, they tempt you, um, they get you to trust them. And it could be in various ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a sexual level, but I do see that there is this energy here that this person always has a way to tempt you back and, and get you back into their good graces. But I see you um, being very closed off, very guarded, and you're using your inner strength and you're saying, no, I don't want to be a third party. I don't want to be your third party anymore. I don't want to be your option. Um, and with the Queen of Swords, you're cutting heads off here. You're really serious. You're severing. You're really serious about severing. Okay. Um, what's the Justice card here with the strength? Yeah. I see you giving someone an ultimatum. You're telling this person that you will only accept them if they make a, a decision about another relationship okay or they're attempting to make a decision but they're unclear on what they want to do they're at a crossroads they're not happy and you're telling this person that that's not your problem right here this person's not happy because their partner is very controlling very cold detached um they're they're contemplating leaving they're coming towards you though but i don't think this person's quite ready to make a decision about offering you more um i feel like this person's being a little bit more a little bit selfish they're looking at this connection with you in a very possessive way yeah we have the will of fortune and the ace of wands a new beginning here hmm can we clarify that? Because there's this very intense push and pull with Pluto. There could be a very intense um, possessiveness here between you and another person. This person, it, it, this Pluto energy makes someone naturally suspicious. So this could be someone with a Pluto placement, especially in the seventh house. Or they could even have it in the eighth house. This person is very intense. This person has intense trust issues. So you, it seems like you're attracting these intense partners um, because the lesson there's a lesson to be learned about healthy boundaries against controlling men. This man wants to uh, possess you. This man gets very jealous. Um, it's like, I want you, but I don't want, I don't want to be with you and offer you a commitment, but I want to be with you. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Like they want you. But they want you because they want to control you. They don't want to um, be with you or, or commit to you, but you're theirs. They don't want you to be with anybody else. This could be with a Libra. I'm seeing that a Libra is doing this to you. A Libra, he, um, he goes back and forth between you and a committed partner, but he does not want you to be able to have freedom. He wants to be able to control your actions. Um... Wow. What's this Will of Fortune and Ace of Wands? This feels like, yeah, conflict, yeah. Tower, I feel like you want to end this cycle with winter, Pisces. This is your energy. You're wanting to end this cycle. We have divine timing, trust in divine timing. This is very interesting because some of you guys may re-enter this cycle. Um... I, I need you guys to follow your intuition, of course, but some of you guys are going to reinitiate this cycle. You guys are going to go back into it. You may have something to learn here. Um, we have the shadow side. There is shadow work to be done. So this this is re-entering this cycle is going to really spark an, another rebirth within you or your person. There's still some emotional baggage that needs to be cleared up. So with this um, tower, there is a, a intense 
change that is going to take place. Um, and it is going to spark a rebirth um, to help someone to to really work through some shadow energies. Um, for some of you guys, this rejection is going to do this to this person. You rejecting this person is really going to create an intense um, rebirth. So for some of you guys, you are rejecting this, especially if it's a Libra, um, a Leo. There is a lot of, there's a little bit of, um, uh, a Libra, male or female, Leo, male or female Capricorn coming through very strongly. Let me say this. If you are dealing with someone that is in a relationship who is married, you need to set boundaries with this person. You need to pay attention to the red flags. Okay. Let's get the final message for nurture. We have the Empress energy. Clarify the Empress. This is your worth, baby. This is growth. Ace of Swords. Yeah. Discernment. Discernment. Yeah. You get a commitment. Okay. You get a commitment when you cut off this situation where someone is putting you in this third party and is continuously breaking your heart. You have to cut the cycle with this person. Um, so the commitment could be with someone completely new, of course. Um, I'm going to confirm. It says divine timing. So it, it, it requires you to really learn a lesson here because someone has taken advantage of you guys. Someone here is taking advantage. They have the intentions of coming in and leaving as they please or they leave anytime you create um, any friction anytime you set a standard or you create it's like when they don't get what they want and you restrict them from getting what they want they will use manipulation tactics like ghosting you to create an intensity between you and them to create this um conflict of you wanting to, to make you fight for them it's to make you chase them it's a it's a game to so be very careful um, because what they'll do is they'll pull away from you because you're trying to affect your confidence solar plexus. So what they'll do is they'll detach from you in order to get you to come to them, to run to them. Oh, let me see if she'll chase me. Let me let me give her some in, in some attention and pull the attention away. Or let me give him some intention and pull it away so that I could get him to chase me. So we have um, the Ace of Swords. You need to have clarity and discernment here. Know your worth, know your value. Ace of Swords with the Empress energy in the beginning. I hear ain't nothing to cut that beep off. Justice. Don't play with me. You want fairness. You want reciprocity. You want, you want someone to treat you with respect. You want a commitment. And the only way you're going to get this commitment is by making a good decision. To stand in your power, to know your worth. And to free yourself of this toxic um, karmic relationship so you are connecting with someone um, and it is very karmic that you, you the way you guys are connecting repeating the cycle of, of coming back together this person may not be um, able to process um, or able to express openly how they really feel about you I feel like this person does have this, this intense desire for you and I do feel like this person cares um, but I think that what's happening is that this, um, this person learns every time you set a boundary. So there's a separation here. Okay. And you're awakening this person. This person's asleep, but there's a, there is a clarity that this person, you were in some sort of illusion there because you wanted a commitment with this person, but you're realizing that this person's not going to be able to give you that commitment. Okay, not until you show this person and demand respect. And you do this by detaching from this energy, not keeping yourself stuck moving forward. Um, because you want a successful relationship. And you understand that in order for you to have a successful relationship, you're going to need to stop playing this game with this person. You're going to need to suffer. Um, you choose a path, five of wands, five of swords. You're not wanting to play this game with this person anymore. All right. So we're going to extend. I, this was a little bit longer because, again, you guys had to wait. But before I extend this reading for you guys, 
Um, if you are interested in the extended, um, you can find my link in my description box. It's five dollars and fifty-five cents to rent. And um, let's get a message from your person. We have the magician. So your person says, I'm grateful for this spiritual lesson. Yeah. Whenever you set your boundaries, this person is, that's when this person will learn. And that is part of the lesson. That is part of the contract is that you need to break free. You need to break free. And I feel like every time you do, this person gets hurt. They feel betrayed by you standing up from yourself. They want to possess you. They want to hold on to you. They want to be with you, but under their terms. Okay. Can we get one more message? What is Pisces teaching this person? What is Pisces teaching this person? It was my fault, but I blamed you. I don't react when people mention you. You don't know how hard it was to let you go. I feel like this person, yeah, they regret lying. The timing wasn't right. I feel like this person made you feel like they were going to give you a commitment. This was the expectation. It was a false expectation. And this is why, this is how they got, they kept you engaged. This is how they kept you in this merry-go-round, this looping of keeping you as this third party, giving you this dangling a carrot, saying, you know, if you, if you play, if you play the game with me, if you, if you, <laughs> I got her heard, it, it, it sounded bad. It almost felt like, may the best one win it's like they put you purposely in a competition they wanted you to compete for them they wanted you to prove that you love them because they didn't have the capacity to really love themselves so they needed external validation can i get one more card on why you made pisces compete for your love i wish i would have treated you better you were the best thing in my life i love you unconditionally but just being near you was intoxicating yeah, there was a toxicity between you guys. You both kind of was in this energy of com competition. So we have separation, surrender. The universe says surrender, divine intervention, and in that you got, you need to retreat for important self-care. So there will be an, a reconnecting, and then there will be a um, disappointment for some of you guys. So be mindful if you do go back into this um, empress you will get disappointed here, so be mindful. Um, also, there could be a Piscean female that's lying about a pregnancy. We'll talk about that in the extended. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. Bye.